I've clicked onto the Global Tropical RE for January the 13th, 2024. As is always the case in these videos, the thought pressure are mine alone and when making decisions ahead of any tropical cyclones, look to the local weather office, local emergency management, and local tropical cyclone warning center. So once again today, we're only going to be focusing on now tropical cyclone Bilal, I think is how you say the name, uh, just named by Matteo France. And this system is now a tropical cyclone. We talked about yesterday how the system was developing. Uh, the ASCAP passes that I touched on earlier uh, or yesterday in my video that were coming out hours after that video had shown that the system had developed more we had more of a well-defined area of low pressure there and over the course of the day and over the nighttime hours we've had more development take place and this is now likely getting itself ready for what could be a quick to rapid phase of intensification once the system comes towards La Reunion and Mauritius early next week. The time frame is looking to be Monday or Tuesday, or even even Sunday, as early as Sunday. But right now, main time frame for landfall potential is likely on Monday, a uh, local time. But keep in mind, impacts are going to start today. We're going to start getting some outer bands across La Reunion and Mauritius today. And I want to first say, today is your last day, really, to get your preparations complete. You may have some time early on Sunday to do some preparations or at least finalize them. But in terms of most of your preparations, today is your last day. After today, we're going to start getting more impacts from the storm coming into the islands, uh, including heavy rainfall, gusty winds, and even waves along the coastline, and that will make for dangerous conditions or preparations. So if you're in Mauritius or La Reunion, you need to get your preparations complete and listen to local emergency management as they're going to have the best information ahead of the storm as it intensifies. Now, as of right now, the system is still a tropical storm. It is not yet a cyclone, but it certainly looks like it's gearing up to get towards cyclone intensity. What you can see is now earlier before the sun went down, we had a bit of loss of a lot of the convection around the center. But overnight, we've seen a lot of convection now blow up around and over the center. And we now have, I'll pause it at the end here, we now have this band of thunderstorms from wrapping in to the center. This is a classic look for a tropical cyclone that is gearing up for intensification. And as time goes on, particularly throughout the day today, the environment is only going to get more favorable. This is a water vapor loop over the system. You can see we still have some divergence to the north. There is some upper level cirrus uh, moving away from the storm to the north. Uh, there is also now expanding upper level cirrus south of the storm. This is that southern outflow channel beginning to open up. Now it's not fully open. You can see it's sort of restricted here. Uh, there is a bit of an upper ridge over Madagascar, and on the eastern end of this, there's some southerly flow, keeping this upper level cirrus from getting too far south. But over the course of the day, we're going to get a weak trough to dig in further south. That is going to weaken the eastern end of this ridge, taking away that southerly flow. And once that happens, uh, this outflow will be able to expand well south into the jet stream. And once it does so, this system will likely uh, be set, setting the stage for, like I said, quick to rapid intensification. You can see that take place here on the HAFS model. You can see here is some of the winds uh, in the streamlines moving towards the south away from the storm, but we've got this little bit of a ridge nosing in here uh, from the west, and it's got a little bit of a southerly push on it. But you'll see there's a little bit of a trough. It's a little bit off your screen, but you'll see it come into the, into the scene. We've got a little bit of a trough here, and now by this time, and this is by Saturday evening, so this evening, local time, the ridge is no longer nosing in here, and now this outflow is able to meet up with the jet ahead of the trough, and once that happens, like I've talked about yesterday, these jet streaks can be very favorable for tropical cyclones, and the concern is now that this system will be able to take full advantage of this. Uh, that shear from the ridge is not going to stay. As I said, it's going to the, the ridge is going to weaken. So that's really not going to impact the system all too much. Really, the only thing stopping it from intensifying with this jet is itself. Could it potentially have some internal struggles? And that's absolutely possible. Uh, that's a bit 
hard to predict uh, right now. But all signs are that as, as so long as the system is really uh, got itself together by the time this jet streak opens, all things are go for intensification. The sea surface temperatures are warm. You can see that here. Uh, east of Madagascar, we've got plenty of sea surface temperatures of 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. Now, there is this patch of cooler waters east of the storm. Unfortunately, today, we've seen a little bit of a westward trend with modeling. So it's sort of taking a bend west of this little cool pool, if you will, uh, east of the storm in this uh, frame here. So unfortunately, that's going to really not have a big impact on the storm. And unfortunately, with this westerly trend, we are now increasing odds of potential significant impacts to La Reunion in particular. Now, the system at this point is going to start turning towards the southeast because of that trough that weakened the upper ridge over southern Madagascar. And really what we're going to have to watch for is exactly how far north or south is it when it makes this southeastward turn. Is it a little bit further north, and then do we get the storm coming right through Mauritius? Or is it a little bit further south, and could we potentially get the storm coming right through La Reunion? And could we have any scenario in between that uh, for both islands? The current idea is that the system will be making this southeastward bend at an angle to get the storm to come right through the middle of these two islands and you might think that's a good thing and in a sense it is because that does have that small chance of the core completely missing both islands but unfortunately this is such a subtle forecast at this time now because any shift to the west or to the east could mean that you get the core in Mauritius or La Reunion and keep in mind this system is not just going to be one point on the map. It's going to be pretty substantial in size. So as the system makes this gap between these two islands, they will likely have tropical storm force winds, potentially of severe criteria, which is about uh, 60 miles per hour or 50 knots, coming through both of these islands. Uh, this is the GFS Ensemble. I'm going to show you this to illustrate the westward trend that we've had today. You can see yesterday the mean low position was about here, north of La Reunion. And over the course of the past few runs, we've had the trend more west. And this is, uh, like I talked about, increasing the chance of a direct hit to La Reunion. But it does not take out the uh, likely or the possibility rather of a landfall in Mauritius. Uh, now I'm going to show you the forecast cone from Mateo France. You can see here there's that westward bend uh, or eastward bend rather and you can see it coming right through the, the gap between La Reunion and, and Mauritius on this forecast as an intense tropical cyclone and I'm going to show you the wind fields as the system comes in. You can see that's of significant size as the system comes through. Uh, and you can see this wind field, I believe this dark orange is about uh, 50 knots. That's the severe winds. The lighter orange is tropical storm force winds, still dangerous. And even though the system is not in this forecast making landfall, <clears throat> excuse me, in either La Reunion or Mauritius, we're still getting those wind fields on shore. And that's very significant winds that could cause trees to come down, power outages, and structural damage. Now, of course, as I said, if the system does trend a little bit further further west or further south, it could come directly over La Reunion and you could get this hurricane force wind or sorry, cyclone force wind field to come on shore and that could absolutely cause uh, even more damage. And same case with uh, Mauritius. If the system does trend a little bit further north or makes a turn a little bit further north, it could come right through Mauritius as, uh, again, an intense tropical cyclone here. Uh, and you can see the wind field as we go through uh, remaining pretty steady and a tropical storm force and wind field coming right through uh, Mauritius on this forecast. Now, in this specific forecast, the good news is the 50 knot winds do stay offshore of Mauritius. And that is good news for you all, but don't take this as a... A thing of the storm isn't going to miss you. You are well within the cone. This is the center line here. And you see these red outlines here. This is where the storm could track. Anywhere within this margin of error 
uh, on either sides of the center track. So that means we could get a track right into La Reunion, like I talked about, and right into Mauritius, like I talked about. And regardless of the exact track, we're going to likely get heavy rainfall, strong winds, and potentially storm surge. And that is going to be one of the other big concerns is storm surge along the immediate coastline for both of these islands. Now, after that, the system is going to track east. And uh, we talked about a couple of days ago how Rodrigues, even though the track was really not poised to hit uh, Rodrigues directly on, we uh, talked about just to not let your guard down in Rodrigues. Uh, there is some confidence that the system will come maybe a bit further east than earlier forecasts had expected. Uh, with the storm once it passes La Reunion and Mauritius. And there is some potential. If the system does come north and say it comes through Mauritius, it could potentially uh, come towards Rod Riggs. There is, the model is, the models are trying to depict a, uh, a strengthening upper ridge to the east of the system as it dives southeast. And this could nudge the system a little bit further north before it continues moving back towards the south. So for those in Rod Riggs, it's very important that you just stay tuned to your local weather office and the Mateo France as uh, they'll have the latest advisories on the system as it does intensify and come your way. Now after that, the system will be weakening down here. The sea surface temperatures do start to decrease. And once the system starts to track southeast, we will get the system to turn into a non-tropical cyclone and that will be the end of Bilal. Now this is the warning page watch a warning page for la reunion you can see we have a, a yellow cyclonic warning in place uh, i believe this is their first level of cyclone alerts this is basically telling you a cyclone impact is possible within the next few days and make sure you're uh, alert of that and make sure you're taking the necessary precautions in terms of rainfall that we could see now the rainfall exactly how much you get in La Reunion and Mauritius is dependent on the track. You can see the HAFS model is a little bit closer to La Reunion, so it really maximizes rainfall over there, and that could easily uh, exceed 500 millimeters of rainfall there. But you can also see with this track south of Mauritius, we still get some significant rainfall here of potentially uh, 200 millimeters or more over the island and these islands do have a little bit of high topography you can see that in the topography map here particularly with la reunion and if you get a lot of heavy rainfall in a short period of time that can lead to lots of flooding issues and potentially mudslides uh, with that high terrain uh, finally i want to show you the wave height forecast from the gfs we've zoomed in here and you can see the very significant wave heights that may exist with the storm once it comes through uh, the red area is about four meters the purple area is about six meters or more and you can see the maximized amount of uh, waves the maximum height of waves that's about six meters there impacting both islands even though on the gfs it comes a little bit further north here so either way very significant impacts coming for both islands for those in la reunion and mauritius i'll say it again today is your last day to prepare well after today conditions are going to start going downhill and make sure you stay tuned to mateo france your local weather office and your local mercy management so you can take the necessary precautions and stay safe as a storm does come through i'll have future uploads on the system as it does progress but as for now that's all i've got for you again stay safe and make sure your preparations are done but that's it for now thanks for watching